In this video, you will see how to create, submit, return, and adjust your timesheets. You are logged in as Bruce Adams and have navigated to the Timesheets page using the link in the menu. The Time Periods carousel shows that the timesheet for the previous week has been posted. There are two options for creating your timesheet. Currently selected is the option to create a timesheet and automatically have the tasks that are currently assigned to you added to the timesheet. This will help ensure that the tasks that are planned for you are added to the timesheet for all the investments to which you are assigned. Optionally, you can also check the boxes that will copy the tasks from the previous timesheet and even copy the hours that you booked to the tasks on that previous timesheet. This helps you create timesheets if you do the same work each week. You can deselect the option to include your assigned tasks and only copy from the previous timesheet. The other option is to create a blank timesheet and add tasks manually. We will not select this option because you will also see how to add tasks manually using the first option. When your selection is made, click Create Timesheet. The timesheet opens and includes all tasks that you are assigned to work on in this week. You can add and remove tasks if required. Let's see how to add more tasks. Filter options enable you to reduce this list to locate specific items. You will filter the list to only show tasks that are assigned to you. You can now select tasks and click Add if there are more tasks lower in the list, or click Add and Close if all required tasks are selected. In this scenario, you do not need to add tasks. You are returned to the timesheet and now will use the Remove Work option to remove some of the tasks on which you did not work. The page now has checkboxes for each task. You select the task you want to remove and then click Delete and Close. With the required tasks on the timesheet, you can now add how many hours you worked each day on the tasks. As you enter the hours, the column and row totals are calculated for you. The ETC values are reduced by the number of hours you booked in your timesheet. This value will update as more hours are booked in the timesheet. You can create duplicate entries for a task. This is done by clicking the task name and clicking Duplicate Task. Notice that a second row has been added with the same task details. You can now update the codes for the duplicate task to identify the different type of work that you did. You can set a new input type code. This can be done in the flyout pane or on the timesheet page to identify that this work will not be billed to the customer. You can now record the work for this duplicate row. Notice that both rows for the task show the same ETC value, 7. This is because both rows affect the same task, and the task can only have one ETC value. Having booked two non-billable hours, the ETC for both entries has reduced to 5. However, the two hours of non-billable work was not planned, and you still need 7 hours of ETC, and so will update the value. The ETC value is highlighted with bold blue text. This helps to highlight the update to the person who will review and approve your timesheet. Hovering your cursor over the highlighted value displays the original value to help see by how much the original value has been increased or reduced. You can add notes to the timesheet to help explain information that is on your timesheet. This opens the flyout pane. From here, click the Notes tab. A note has been added to explain why these hours have been added and why they are non-billable. Notice there is a number 1 on the task name in the timesheet and on the Notes tab in the flyout pane. This indicates how many notes exist for this task. You can also add notes for the whole timesheet. The flyout pane now shows the timesheet notes page. These notes apply to the whole timesheet, not a specific task. This example note explains that Mike was on vacation on Friday. There is now a number 1 on the Notes button, indicating the presence of one note. When your timesheet is ready to be approved, you submit it. The Submit button has been replaced by the Return button. If you notice an error on the timesheet, you can return it, correct the error, and then submit it again. However, if the timesheet has been approved, you will not be able to return it unless you have approval rights for your own timesheet. 
and will need to ask an approver to return the timesheet so you can make the updates. You will now examine the posted timesheet for the previous time period. Notice that you cannot return this timesheet if errors need to be corrected. Instead, you have to create an adjustment timesheet by clicking Adjust. This creates a copy of the posted timesheet. This copy is referred to as an adjustment timesheet, and there is a button to delete this adjustment if it was created in error. You now go through the same process for adding tasks, booking hours, updating the ETC, and adding notes. Your aim is to create what should have been on the originally posted timesheet. Notice that there is no Remove Work button. If you need to remove the hours that have been posted, for example on the Loan Approval Enhancement project, you need to set the daily values to zero in this adjustment timesheet. A new task has been added and the hours and ETC values have been updated. You can now submit this timesheet. The timesheet needs to be approved and then will be posted. The carousel indicates the status of the timesheets for each time period. Notice that the timesheet for September 18th to September 24th has been returned. We will investigate this. If you had requested that the timesheet be returned to you, you can now make your updates. If the timesheet was returned by an approver because there were errors, you can read the notes that the approver might have added and then make the required updates. You then need to submit the timesheet so that it is available for approval. The timesheet is submitted. Thank you for watching this video. For more detailed information about CAPPM, click the information bubble in the top right corner to load the product page. From there you can go to product documentation, visit CA communities, or see the learning path.